come here, come here. Come here. I've been called obsessed with this by a lot of people. I don't usually talk stocks around the apartment because it drives my girlfriend crazy. I especially don't talk Tesla. And by the way, it's not, it's not ruling my life. I mean, I don't think about it while I'm out to dinner or while I'm sleeping or whatever. With Tesla stock passing over $2,000 a share, it hasn't been an enjoyable year for Tesla short sellers. In 2020 alone, the Tesla short sellers lost over $25.4 billion, marking one of the longest unprofitable shorts in history. Throughout this time, the short seller arguments have evolved in a way we've never seen before. Just one year ago, the primary argument against Tesla was centered around profits and demand. Today, the Tesla short sellers have shifted their arguments to be based on legality rather than practicality. In this video, I'm going to cover how much Tesla stock has devastated the short sellers financially and where the short sellers' arguments lie today. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing for more content like this and let's get right into it. During the second quarter of 2020, Tesla beat estimates by a substantial amount on both profits and deliveries. However, when comparing to an annual basis, Tesla's sales dropped 4% year over year, which is understandable due to the facts that Tesla's factory was shut down for a portion of the quarter. During the same quarter, GM, Fiat Chrysler, Volkswagen, Ford, and Toyota all had their sales drop 30-40% to year over year, representing an increase in market share. Nevertheless, according to a famous Tesla short seller named Mark Spiegel, Tesla is quickly losing EV market share and will soon have its revenue growth in the single digits. And um, one of the guys in Europe, a fund manager, he's on Twitter as, as fly for debt Just this afternoon, he threw up a market share chart for Tesla. And it's gone from, of the EV market in Europe, it's gone from over 30% to now around 11%. And by later this year, it's going to be in the single digits because a bunch of more models are rolling out from Volkswagen and BMW. So no revenue growth for this company. No unit sales growth to speak of, not that it matters because all that should matter is revenue in a growth company, and sliding market share in any competitive market. And, you know, t Europe's a bellwether for competitive EV markets. I mean, China is going to be extremely competitive by later this year because there's a whole bunch of stuff rolling out there, not from Tesla. The only one that's not going to be super competitive, you know, at least for a while, is the U.S. I mean, there are there is some stuff coming out. Um, you know, Ford's coming out with the electric, you know, Mustang Mach-E or whatever it's called. And, and you know, in a couple of years before Tesla has a truck, both GM and Ford will have probably really good electric pickup trucks. And, and of course, there's the Rivian. But, the, but my point is that in a competitive market, Tesla's market share slides into the toilet. And that's exactly what's happening in Europe. And that's what's going to happen to them worldwide. So there, there is... There's no growth anywhere in this company. Gordon Johnson, another notorious short seller, also shares the same view. They did more in deliveries than they did in the second quarter, despite having a new factory right. in China and a whole new car offering the Model Y. So when people start to get the real out or start to see that the growth is slowing, we think it becomes a real problem for Tesla. We see that. We think it's going to become very evident um, in, the, in the third and fourth quarter. And we think them pulling forward Gordon. all this credit revenue confuses people. But they're guiding that down 50 percent in the back half. And then in 2021, we think it drops off significantly. We think they go back into burning money, just not just on a net income basis, but also on a free cash flow basis. <laughs> Unlike many other Tesla short sellers who have given up the argument about batteries, Mark Spiegel is still adamant about his claims. Mark has been short Tesla for over 6 years, and while he has changed his bare thesis, he still can't let this argument go. Mark's theory first started in the middle of 2017 where he publicly mentioned that Tesla's batteries were inferior to the legacy automaker's batteries. They have absolutely nothing meaningfully or sustainably proprietary. And in fact, in some ways, their batteries are now obsolete, but it's a design that they originally came up with probably when they designed the first car around 2006. Of course, we all know Tesla's battery investor days approaching and that Tesla has filed plenty of battery patents over the past few months. These patents, along with the pilot production line in Fremont, hint at the facts that Tesla is vertically integrating into battery manufacturing. However, Mark doesn't seem to be picking up on this. On August 22nd, Mark questioned a Tesla bull on Twitter by asking, 
Do you understand that Tesla buys batteries from Panasonic, LG, and CATL and doesn't make them? Do you think I am making this up? With such an adamant bare thesis, Mark has set a price target on Tesla of $25 a share. You heard that right. $25 a share. $25 a share is where Mark sees Tesla stock going to. Now Mark and Gordon may be trading as much money as your grandma. On the contrary, two other shorts, Jim Chanos and David Einhorn have much more money on their hands. Jim Chanos, who short sellers like to call the LeBron James of short selling, has been shorting Tesla for over 6 years now. Along the way, he's been squeezed out of his short position many times. Nevertheless, he sees an end where he wins as one of the investors in the big short too. To put this statement into reference, I'm sure many of you have watched the movie named The Big Short where four investors bet against the market in the 2008 recession and make a boatload full of money. In an article titled Investment Guru Chanos Warns The Big Short Coming Again, Chano stated, This market is setting up to be one of the great short opportunities of all time. Trouble's coming. I don't know when, but it's coming. In this article, he describes the current situation as the quote unquote golden age of fraud. To many of you, Chanos' argument likely seemed baseless, and rightfully so. There was no clarification on where the fraud lies. On the other hand, David Einhorn, the manager of Greenlight Capital, actually details the reasoning behind his argument. In the second quarter of 2020, Einhorn's fund only returned 1% compared to the S&P 500's return of 20.5%. This was partly due to the facts that Einhorn purchased Tesla put options in May and also refused to cover his short position when Tesla stock dipped in March. Now let's go over Einhorn's accounting argument. Back in 2019, Fiat Chrysler struck a deal with Tesla in order to avoid European emission fees. This deal was compensated with credits paid by Fiat which would total up to over $2 billion. When Fiat paid these credits over the past few quarters, Tesla didn't automatically book the profits of Fiat's credits. This, according to Einhorn, was purposely delayed so that Tesla would enter the S&P 500. Einhorn stated that through what appears to be sheer abuse of the accounting rules, Tesla has now contrived reported profits to make it technically eligible. While it is true that Tesla has delayed some credits paid by Fiat, Einhorn's reasoning behind this doesn't seem to make sense. In the first and second quarter of 2020, Tesla booked a profit of over $1 and $2 a share respectively. Even with the reduction of a portion of the regulatory credits that were delayed, Tesla likely still would have booked a profit, leading the company to qualify for S&P 500. Relax, baby. AB Bernstein, an investment firm which has been bearish on Tesla for years now, still doesn't get the facts that Tesla is not a car company. To be this nearsighted is quite ridiculous, as in Q2 2020, Tesla's mega pack made a profit for the first time, and Elon Musk has also emphasized that Tesla will begin focusing on ramping up solar panel installations. So to, to get to $900 a share, which is our price target, we have to believe that Tesla sells 6 million cars per year in 2030. That's uh, more than the combined size of Mercedes and BMW today. And we have to believe it becomes the size of Volkswagen, which is the largest car maker in the world by 2050. Keep in mind that this is the same guy who said 6 months ago that Apple was worth under $200 a share, as he claims that Apple was an overvalued hardware company. It almost seems as if Bernstein is paid by gas companies to spew out this nonsense, as he seems to consistently believe that companies can only sell in one sector. For years, we've seen the media constantly turn against Tesla, whether it's Business Insider, CNBC, or Seeking Alpha. One of these reporters, Tim Higgins, who works for the Wall Street Journal, recently came out to publicly announce his bias against Tesla. Well, since the stock split was announced, I mean, you've seen that giant uh, increase and there hasn't been any fundamental change to the business uh, that would justify such a huge uh, increase. But really, it underscores just the idea that there are a lot of retail investors who are excited to be in the story. And this is a story stock, uh, even going back to the beginning. It's the, the sale of this is the future of transportation. And, and it's a lot of ways uh, like the way that Elon Musk sells his cars through viral marketing and enthusiasm uh, through uh, people who are excited about that future. The notion that retail investors are the ones pumping up Tesla stock isn't entirely true. 
We've seen many institutional investors turn bullish on the stock over the past few months, from the skeptical Dan Ives at Wedbush to the more traditional investor Bob Lutz. On top of that, there's also a continuous cycle of short squeezes leading to price increases. The other point that Higgins makes here is that Tesla stock remains as a story, which makes no sense. EVs are inevitably going to become the future of the automobile market as battery costs continue declining and energy density increases. This isn't just the hope that EVs will be the future of transportation. EVs are the future of transportation. Let me know what you think about the Tesla short sellers in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.